गुड इवनिंग फ्रेंड्स रिक्वेस्ट पीपल टू टेक देयर सीट्स प्लीज वील स्टार्ट इन अबाउट वन और मिनट सो गुड इवनिंग वंस अगेन फ्रेंड्स वॉम वेलकम टू मोतीलाल लोसवाल टावर As you would be aware, this forum uh, is our flagship event, Value Investing Forum, fifth edition, and this event is basically all about discussing aspects and insights on value investing by some of the biggest market mindsets. With every edition, we have been trying to bring newness and interactivity to the event, be it through content or through the panelists. Last year, we raised the bar on interactivity by getting leading financial advisors to interact with Ramdev Agarwal. on a panel this year we have raised the bar so this year for the first time this event is being live telecasted to about six locations apart from mumbai so bangalore delhi calcutta ahmedabad pune chennai all these locations are watching live and uh, to my guess about 1000 uh, distributors from mf fraternity are watching this event right now live to set the tone for the evening I would like to invite uh, Mr. Motilal Oswal, our founder and chairman, Motilal Oswal Financial Services, to share his thoughts on this forum. Uh, sir, if you could come. Uh, once again, I welcome all of you uh, to Value Investing Forum Fifth Edition, and hope you have a great evening. Thank you. A very good evening to you, friends. It's really a pleasure for me to welcome you all, and especially many of our investors from uh, six cities apart from Mumbai. This is the first time when we are, I would say, live from Mumbai across the country. So, friends, this is the fifth edition of our uh, Value Investing Forum. a very interesting one although we have been practicing uh, value investing as a uh, style for more than 15 years now but the forum is just 5 years old and this is the forum for us to share lot of kind of i think ideas and knowledge uh, through this forum today's uh, this session this learning session is going to be very interesting is in two parts uh, i think in part 1 ramdev is going to share his uh, learnings from his 19 studies and his frameworks on investing through qlp and then in second part we have got uh, i would say very learned panel of market practitioners uh, sanjay bhattacharya durgesh bhai and of course ramdev agarwal and uh, navin agarwal will uh, kind of uh, coordinate or he will try to <coughs> manage the panel if you look at i would say both the sessions is uh, i would say there is a very strong uh, correlation between the study on wealth creation and uh, the the part of uh, the the topic for the uh, panel is uh, learning from the warren buffett letters <coughs> i think many of our wealth creation studies came out of uh, from various themes coming out of the warren buffett letters i think some of them uh, you must have gone through whether it is uh, great good and gruesome or blue chip investing or uh, <clears throat> maybe winning categories category winners so i think many of the studies came out of uh, some of the kind of i think themes coming out of uh, warren buffett so in that sense uh, while i think doing the studies for many years it has been great learning for uh, us and uh, those learnings has been i would say reflected into the practice through whatever money we manage for our customers and what advice we give it uh, to our customers <clears throat> uh, so thanks to those uh, learnings and then application of that that we have been able to i would say quite successfully manage the money since last 2000 uh, i think last 13 years from 2003 when we started our pms formal pms although before that we were advising to the brokerages and uh, i would say advise the services but the pms the value uh, in the names as value investing or the value pms 
in 2003 i i think that is become one of the largest pms uh, in the market both the value and the trillion dollar uh, which we launched in 2007 we manage about 3500 crores worth of money and uh, since after that we launched our own kind of uh, mutual funds i think same philosophy same framework continues and in last about one year we would be managing about uh, 2500 crores worth of money through our mutual funds so in all we manage about little more than 6000 crores worth of uh, equities which puts us i would say in top 15 amcs if we put across both the pms and amc i think with, and with your support i would say our aspirations are very high and we definitely want to become much more kind of i think bigger but more importantly the different uh, asset management company <coughs> uh so friends i i think uh, the first is uh, the the learnings and second thing is that application as we, as we call it the proof of the pudding is in eating and through uh, i think managing this money we have been eating our own kind of i think uh, philosophies of uh, value investing and more importantly the uh, title as uh, qglp that is quality growth longevity and price which ramdev is going to talk more in detail and second thing is that uh, we put our own, own money or uh, what we call it uh, we put our own money where our mouth is and uh, apart from what i would say net worth we have in our own company mutual asol financial services most of our own money is also put into our own amc uh, uh, schemes which is focus 25 30 and 35 i think the performance has been staggering some of the numbers if, if i would like to share with you of uh, the pms uh, i think since last uh, i would say 2003 the 1 crore invested in pms has become about 19 crores uh, compared to the benchmark which is about 8 crores but if i look at the recent performance in last one year the value has given about 55% compared to the sensex uh, sorry the nifty which is about 26% the last 3 years while the nifty has given about 17% the pms the value has given 27% but even the better performance is in our tdop scheme which we launched actually in 2007 which is uh, into mid cap benchmarked uh, with mid cap and uh, the benchmark uh, in la since inception from 2007 the benchmark has given only 6% return while uh, the scheme tdop has given about 20% cagr return uh, in last uh, <coughs> uh, i would say from 2007 so about 8 uh, years last one year even has been very staggering uh, the tdop performance is about 72% compared to 51% of uh, the benchmark so the 1 crore invested in tdop uh, has become about 3.8 crores versus 1 and 1/2 crores uh, in uh, the benchmark and the same performance continued also the mutual fund schemes the uh, it's just about a year performance uh, in all three schemes which we manage which is large cap focus 25 uh, mid cap which is focus 30 and multi cap which is uh, 35 i think the performance is absolutely stunning compared to the benchmark uh, <clears throat> focus 25 has returned about 46% compared to 26% focus 30 i would say the highest because say mid cap it is 81% compared to the 51% in the benchmark and multi cap which is 71% compared to 32% of the benchmark so i think i would say it's uh, uh it's a great performance and i'm very proud to share this kind of performance and i'm very very thankful to all of you all of uh, our distributors all of our customers for showing that kind of faith uh, in us and supporting us at all the time and with that uh, i once again welcome you all i welcome especially our uh, panelist and uh, uh, i would say hand over the mic for the next proceedings thank you very much <coughs> thank you sir uh, for sharing uh, a lot of interesting data on the performance i just want to add uh, one more data point uh, last value investing forum we had in august 2014 and uh, our total assets under management at that point of time was something somewhere around 2 and a half thousand crores as on date we are managing about 5800 crores so i would say that the last value investing forum which was the fourth edition was very lucky for us and thanks to all of you for all the support you have been giving con you know continuously and consistently now the next session is the most uh, sought out sought out session uh, and for which i would like to invite uh, mr ramdev agarwal uh, 
uh, and I would like him to share his uh, story in his own words about his wealth creation journey and the various mantras he has learned along the way. So, sir, I welcome you. Mr. Agarwal, of course, doesn't need any introduction, but he is Joint Managing Director and Co-Founder of Motilal Oswal Financial Services. Uh, we are also proud to have him as Chairman of our Asset Management Company. Uh, he is a keen believer and practitioner of QGLP philosophy and his wealth creation insights and decades rich experience have played a pivotal role in MOFSL, transforming it from small stockbroking firm to a well-diversified financial services company. His firm belief in value investing forms the core Motilal Oswal's investment philosophy. So friends, please join me in welcoming Mr. Ramdev Agarwal once again. Thank you. Hello, yeah. So, good evening, friends, and uh, warm welcome to Mutala Salt Tower. It's always a pleasure to stand here and talk to all of you. Uh, and uh, so, it's yet another opportunity. So, this time, it's been uh, a very different kind of uh, format, very unusual. In fact, uh, it's a kind of experiment that uh, we have uh, called you to talk about something. Buffett letters. I mean, that has been the one of the. Uh, I mean, for me, it is a uh, like Gita or Ramana, and uh, I've learned everything about investing. Apart from my CA degree, I think bulk of the frameworks or understanding has come from uh, Buffett letters. So, uh, so you know, we said uh, this is the 50th year of uh, Buffett letters, and uh, even in Omaha, it is going to be a big, uh, big gathering. I think it will be more like 50, 60,000 people going there. Uh, I'm different. I'm very clear that the hall will be so much full out there that uh, we are going with 30, 40 people from here. So it is going to be a big show out there. And uh, uh, we'll see. I mean, he has written very special letter. Even Charlie Munger has written. Uh, and they have tried to even predict uh, what to expect uh, in terms of uh, next 50 years of uh, Berkshire Hathaway and things like that. And uh, if you know, uh, uh, Mr. Buffett started uh, uh, Berkshire Hathaway and his biggest mistake was purchase of Berkshire itself because as a business, the textile business was closing down. And I think that itself laid the foundation for his learning. So I think he, he has been very prolific. And uh, as far as uh, uh, my own <coughs> journey in the stock market is concerned, you know, uh, it has been like a lot of bumps and... Uh, uh, it has been a matter of luck that uh, I am here or we are here to uh, see uh, how it has evolved. But uh, when I look back, you know, uh, because what happens is that in the stock market, there are 10 million guys, there are 10 million ways of making money. So you have to find your way and nobody is right, nobody is wrong. So I have to find my way and, it's a, and there is no, in the classroom you cannot find the, your way of investing. And uh, hence, you have to keep committing mistakes and it's a long, torturous journey of, of finding your own way. So what happened was, in 1980, I bought my first stock and uh, when I actually entered the market in 85, 86, it was, uh, it was a very primitive market. When I look back, it was absolutely primitive market. It was a physical market. You had, uh, companies were very small. I mean, you're talking about single digit numbers. The IPOs will be 2 crores, 3 crores, 10 crores, I mean, convertible bond issue of... Uh, Telco would be 10 crores and it will flop and there will be so much of headline news for that issue to flop. CIPLA was about 5 crores total market cap in 87. In 1988 you could buy ITC, total ITC for 100 crores. So I mean the, just the scale, I mean I was today uh, talking to Mr. Parekh uh, and uh, he said in 1978 10, total uh, issue of uh, HDFC was formed with 10 crores capital. 3 crores public issue and it flopped. I mean, there was nobody to buy 30% uh, of HDFC for 3 crores, you know, in 1978. So it was a different world altogether. We were all there. I was started account by 83. So it was a very different thing. I mean, today this 3, 4 crores, 5 crores, they look to be like a... I mean, people pay for even one trip, this kind of a thing. And marriages are today happening for this much amount. Which, where, for that amount, you could buy an entire corporation. So it was very primitive market, physical settlements, uh, uh, settlements used to be officially T plus 15, but typically it used to happen T plus 21 or T plus 28 also. And 
all the papers were lying in the office you were scared when you closed the office whether tomorrow morning you will be safe or unsafe you know because hundreds of crores worth of shares of clients were lying and you go out put one lock and live in the hands of few clerks next day morning if there is a fire i mean even the offices were so bad i mean if there is a fire there was no way to get the money back so i think it was a very very primitive market if you look back that was the dral street i mean the way it is shown but the the real iconic thing was the tower and uh, so that's how we kind of evolved in 19 uh, the thing and <clears throat> the only thing we knew was eps and pe i mean this was the total understanding of the stock market and even growth word was not understood so change in eps change in pe and you are done i mean that's the only mathematics we knew probably calculators were not in hand computers when i think com- lack of computers i mean computing power was one of the constraint not only at a analyst level but even at a investor level because you just how do you do the calculation how do you do compounding how do you do how to look at 5s number so it was physically impossible so actually you could read the balance sheet and go and buy the uh, buy in the market and you are far ahead of the entire crowd so that was the kind of that primitive was the market <clears throat> and so we started very small in uh, 87 and uh, that uh, immediately after i started i got married i met moti just a uh, year before and uh, uh, and you know at that point of time the biggest ignorance was your own ignorance just living in not knowing anything it was just like we didn't know what is america what happens there uh, there are so many journals are there so many books are there and uh, the world had moved on and we were there only so the good thing was we were known, not knowing what is happening in the world we were we were thinking what we know were the smartest guys in the town but uh, that sheer confidence and passion for equities that kept us going because we didn't have money we just wanted to make money somehow and uh, good thing was that i didn't get into the speculation so that uh, didn't throw me out from the market so i i survived in the market and then the big thing happened that was the first big thing for motilal swal and for me was the harsha mehta bull run 91 92 it was i don't know how many guys were there at that point of in, time in the market we were doing business uh, we had bought the membership in 1990 and uh, we had just about 10 12 lakhs rupees we borrowed 12 lakhs rupees we bought the membership and then that was that changed the entire game and the bull run came by the end of 1992 at the peak of the bull run we had 30 crores worth of shares in our hand i mean a guy who didn't have 10 lakhs had 30 crores worth of shares and then we said boss now nobody can throw us out from the market so that was the and then again the same thing happened we bought the bank shares and the scam happened in banks only so you know from 30 crores we came down to so every time we used to go 10x and come down 3x so the next was the crash happened but we didn't realize that what is a bull market bear market we said that was an accident it happened and we kept i mean there was no index there was no channel there was nobody nasdaq no cnbc nothing so you were just you were happy you know uh, doing things but by that time books started flowing books magazines newspaper all those things started coming in and we started reading that because we were hungry for the reading and we were reading only balance sheets till then now you are reading the books and the very rapid globalization started happening you started hearing about what is morgan stanley what is jardin fleming what is uh, uh, so those time there was uh, jardin fleming and uh, there were few uh, other global names i mean first time i heard this thing called merrill lynch you know so they were giants at that point of time but we never heard about them so clearly uh, in india was just about emerging in 93 94 and uh, thanks to globalization we heard first time about uh, warren buffett somebody uh, dear friend sanjay who is here who is going to be part of panel i think big clap for sanjay introducing me warren buffett so he 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 volunteered to he said i mean typically we always keep talking so he said why don't you read this so i read this and i i just it was love at first sight i i read the letters I mean that 94 letter where he talked about importance of return on equity. He said, "Don't focus on EPS. Bother about return on equity." Because the, the, he wanted us to because he himself had committed mistake in the buying bad companies to start with, and then he was buying good companies by that time. So I had I mean so that actually said. Then I realized that boss, this guy knows something, and then I read full 20 years 65 till 95, and that and very next year I could go to. Uh, uh warren buffett show i mean that uh, agm and you see the photograph actually i was there with him 
and uh, just on the eve, you could, because it was such a small gathering at that point of time, you know, very few were going. I mean, to go to travel 32 hours from here to Omaha, you go from here to New York, to Chicago, to Buffalo, so, it, sorry, uh, Omaha. So it used to take a lot of effort to go there. Two, three thousand people used to be there. He used to be coming, talking to you, mixing around with you, have a photo shoot. He will doll, sign the dollar bill, a book or whatever. So he's signing a dollar bill for me uh, in the evening and uh, people used to line up and we used to get it signed. And so uh, it was very easy, very small. He himself was not that rich. Maybe it was hundred billion dollars or something like that. Was it? No. It was not that big. It must be, he was already a billionaire, maybe 10, 15 billion dollars by that time. So uh, clearly, uh, that was a wonderful uh, site in Omaha and uh, we were just, uh, we couldn't get enough of uh, Buffett. So that was a starting, he was, he was the bridge between, I mean that ROE, return on equity was a bridge between uh, book value and intrinsic value. And uh, Sanjay turned out to be a bridge between me and uh, Buffett, so to say, you know. So that was the starting of uh, uh, building up of my investment philosophy from that primitive balance sheet reading and P and EPS kind of situation. Then, on the way, then we started getting books. So, uh, one of the, uh, uh, one of the books which really uh, also helped was, uh, I would say, Common Stocks, Uncommon Profits, Phil Fisher, all-time classic, written in 1958. Amazing book, amazing book. I think it's a must read if you can uh, pick up. Then, uh, I think equivalent to Buffett for me is a competitive strategy by Michael Porter. The, I mean, how do you analyze competition? So this was another big book. Then, uh, I mean, Buffett letters are there. Then you have another book uh, by Value Migration by Adrian Slovesky. Uh, value Investing, later on explained by Professor Gridwald and uh, Michael Mobison. So these are all books uh, which has impacted deeply on the journey to uh, our, uh, what do you call, evolution of uh, framework for investing. So in 1996, we, we started doing this wealth creation study. That was the first day of corporatization of uh, Motilal Oswal. You know, I um, mean, uh, we were a uh, proprietorship company till about 1996. We started in uh, 87 and uh, we were, Moti was the only proprietor, uh, this thing, and I was consultant to the firm. And uh, then we formalized the thing uh, in 1996 and to celebrate that particular occasion, we started writing wealth creation study. And then later on, we started doing every year. So the whole purpose was, if you go to page three or four of this book, he has said, if you enter any country, any market, first you understand how money is made in that particular market. Because every market has its own uniqueness. So you must understand how exactly money is made. So we said, let's study the five-year rolling, how the money is made, and the characteristics of it. Because just because in last five years what is happening, we want to make money in next five years, shouldn't be very different. So with that thought process, we started studying last five years, uh, companies which have made money and what are the characteristics of that. So that's how the whole wealth creation study started. Then, then came this book, uh, uh, Professor Greenwald, Columbia professor. He has visited India and uh, he is uh, one of the best professors today of value investing. He's still teaching in uh, Columbia. He, he has this uh, summer programs. Uh, uh, I think it is the best. Uh, program for MBAs also in Colombia, and he, he does this uh, seminar. So he, in fact, he called me once to do India Forum, and we went there just to say thanks to him uh, for writing this book. And there he has talked about in this book uh, three pillars of uh, valuation, the break of value, franchise value, and uh, growth value. So that clears, I mean, there's only Buffett's thought process which he has put it very nicely. So there we w learned one thing, that uh, the same franchise profit, the growth is good only if it happens in the same franchise or in the same business. The, as the, so that's why the page industry or a Coke or an Asian paint or a very focused companies, those who are just building up. And India is one country where all these companies are still very small. So, I mean, like an Asian paint with 60% market share, they're selling just about uh, the just simple paint. But, uh, I mean, they're gaining market share, a, a Colgate. I mean, they're just selling toothpaste, and there's so much more toothpaste to be sold, there's so much more Asian, uh, sorry, paints to be sold. So every single I mean, amount of growth, which happens 10, 15, 20% year after year, they're more profitable than last 10 years. So uh, valuations, of course, are uh, uh, very important in this thing, but understanding the intrinsic value of a business 
you must i mean there is a difference between a growth in the same category and uh, and growth in a diversified new uh, line of business so this book is very very clear and it's mathematical i mean buffett gave framework i mean he talked the stories and stories but this guy he crunched everything and give a mathematical uh, mathematical formula for uh, for people like us to understand more uh, you know in uh, numbers how do you look at it so this is huge book i think it is still recommended to be read by people then by turn of the century we were at 12 13% 14% kind of a situation 15% non what is that non convertible bonds were order of the day and then uh, something happened why to post why to k and indian interest rates collapsed from uh, 11 12% to more like 4 5% i don't know how many people remember but that was one of the biggest slide in the interest rates here and he wrote a letter i mean a page in uh, fortune magazine uh, which was uh, which was uh, impact of interest rate uh, on valuation of assets and uh, that was so he said at, at all times in all markets in all parts of the world the tiniest change in the interest rate changes the value of every single financial assets so what happens is the value what value you see is there is no absolute value there is no concept of absolute value and values are all relative so Uh, if you read this article you can go in google and figure out uh, buffett on market is one of the best articles ever written 64 82 and 2000 so the all the bull run of 82 to 2000 in us has what really built the empire for uh, buffett in that period so the so so you know the the importance of interest rate was very very clear then we uh, while we were doing our 6th uh, 7th 8th studies then we came across uh, this thought process let's understand Uh, what is the bargaining power? I mean, this Michael Porter thing, uh, the, the between consumer and the supplier. What kind of terms of trade you have? The companies which have very favorable terms of trade with the customer, with service supplier. If you have a very favorable terms of trade both sides, I mean, this those com those kind of companies they make lot of money. So we have done this study. So you know, every time you are learning one thing in one study. So we we understood the importance of what are the terms of trade in uh, wealth creation. then i think one of the best studies so far i mean looking back and it this is the most defining uh, uh uh study which has impacted our investment style and the amount of money which we have made is the india the next trillion dollar opportunity that was in 2007 india hit 45 lakh crore gdp and rupee fell from 49 to 42 so suddenly by default or by act of god india became a trillion dollar gdp economy that was in 2007 we said let's understand this phenomenon and uh, we have become the top 12 countries in the world to enter the trillion dollar club china incidentally entered that club in 1998 and by that time we had seen what china had become in 1998 we didn't know where china is by 2008 all over it was china so we said is it the possibility for india that in next 10 years it will be all over india so this is what exactly is the study all about and the main part of the study is the discretionary spend where the corporate structure comes in is going to just explode i mean uh, what will be a linear gdp growth will be exponential business opportunity in the discretionary spend and that's why we bought page we bought aishar we bought whole lot of these companies and incidentally in december 2007 we launched a small pms called the next trillion dollar opportunity so it was launched right at the peak uh, in 2007 and uh, so that that fund is supposed to buy all the stocks which will be positively impacted by the next trillion dollar opportunity which is discretionary spend in the economy then i think uh, buffett wrote the best piece in 2007 annual letter page 16 and uh, 17 where he wrote uh, what kind of companies he wants to buy and what kind of companies he wants to avoid not buying i mean avoiding so great good gruesome you know what is a good company what is a bad company i think this itself is sufficient to practice for any non uh, i would say uh, an outsider if he comes to the market and if he is able to understand this particular phenomenon i think he has achieved 90% of uh, uh, investing good i mean how good investing he will learn only by reading this particular framework so great good gruesome i mean you can you can i mean it took 60 years or 50 years of investing for him to write this piece in 2007 so we were not that late in understanding this so clearly he wrote his insight in 2007 that there are only three types of businesses 
good and great, better focus there, but 90% of the business are gruesome, useless businesses. And that's what is the source of trouble for all the investors, and it has to be avoided. That's why my first point in my investment philosophy is Q, non-negotiable, QGLP. First is Q, and that is 99% of the entire uh, investment practice. So uh, Q is non-negotiable. It is the non-Q or bad quality which brings all the misery to the investors. So this is a very transformative study and transformative piece of paper actually written by Buffett in his 2007 report in page six and seven. Then we did uh, importance of dividends. I, mean, I think uh, another book, Buffettology by his uh, uh, daughter-in-law, uh, she wrote that three books he keeps on his bedside. One of the book is 1938 classic uh, uh, value, Theory of Investment Value by John Burr William. And there he has talked about dividend discount model. And he has said there, a cow for her milk, a hen for her eggs, and a stock by heck for her dividends. So, you know, this is the uh, this is the cornerstone of, I mean, you buy stocks for dividends. So in this study, we have understood how, how important is the dividend for the, uh, for the companies and for the investors, in companies for the valuation and investors for their own prosperity. So, and it is, it is going to take some time for the uh, government, for the companies to understand what should be a rational dividend policy. Durgesh Bhai had been very, very helpful in taking us to uh, you know, I mean, encourage us to keep talking about this to the companies and uh, everybody, even to the authorities, SEBI and all. But it will take a lot of time for all these authorities to understand. How, I mean, government has been raising, I mean, the only thing you get from the uh, companies is the dividend. And there they're raising the, from the dividend distribution tax from 10 to 20 percent or maybe 21 percent, I don't know where they've taken. So I think government authorities are not understanding what is the importance of dividend. And they want Indian company guys to come into the market. And if you are uh, making different very unattractive, I mean, how, how it is going to happen. So I think uh, one has to, there is a huge importance of dividend in valuation of the companies and uh, overall prosperity of the uh, shareholder. We studied the economic mode, I mean, uh, uh, the ultimate uh, of uh, uh, investing where he talked about moats around the companies and uh, even Michael Porter talked about unique companies and what it requires to be, uh, you know, uh, to to, to reach in that kind of situation. So this was a study about uh, uniqueness of the companies and how unique companies make money in the stock market. Then I think just two, three years back, one of the, one of the again, another framework, which is, uh, which was from Michael Mobison, you know, the uh, measuring the mode. And here we, I mean, I think after 30 years of, 30 years in the market, this particular study liberated me from the market completely. At that point of time, I realized that Uncommon profits, abnormal profits in the companies is equal to abnormal profits in the markets. You don't have to worry about the market because markets are irrational, unpredictable. Whereas the profitability and quantum of profits to be made by the companies are far more predictable. I don't say it is perfectly predictable, but still you can, you can have much better understanding. At least if you operate within a circle of competence, you definitely can have a better feel than, than uh, your feel about the market. So this has actually reduced my focus on the market. Maybe it was 10% by that time to just about 1%. Then, <coughs> actually, uh, by that time, just one and a half, two years back, we had already coined our uh, uh, mantra as quality, growth, longevity at reasonable price. Because reasonable price was very important. Buffett said right in the beginning, have the purchase price so attractive that even a mediocre sale gives a wonderful result in the investing. So price was never in doubt. I mean, there is no investing without rational pricing of the, uh, of the companies. So clearly that uh, uh, the framework was there just about one and a half, two years back. And then we did this study last year. This is 100x power of growth because growth was not understood. And uh, I checked all over. I wrote to Michael Mobison. I, I asked, of course, our biggest guru, Sanjay Bhattacharya. I asked him whether he has read anything significant about the growth. But actually... Uh, how to measure growth, how to find, uh, how to predict growth. I think there are not many frameworks. And that's why we studied this and we, uh, we read about all the companies. I don't think we are, our work is complete. It's a work in progress. I think we'll come out with some more papers on understanding growth. So uh, eventually uh, the quality, uh, growth, longevity of growth and reasonable pricing at reasonable price. That has become the framework, but it's a, it's a journey which is uh, on. It's a work in progress. Probably the name of the, the framework will remain same, 
but uh, you know the uh, the what goes on into uh, uh, practicing that will become tighter so qglp is an action in uh, value portfolio moti told uh, this is the performance which we have seen in 12 years and this is the performance in focus 35 in last 11 12 months it is more than double i mean i am really stunned but uh, probably it's a sheer uh, stroke of luck that this style is in uh, uh, right now very popular so uh, it's a it's a long journey uh, as it is said uh, it's time probably for somebody to retire the woods i mean uh, robert frost wrote the woods are lovely dark and deep but i i have promises to keep and miles to go before i sleep thank you very much join in the journey of qglp thank you sir uh, very mesmerizing story uh, i'll request mr agarwal to stay back on stage for some time since we have, since mr agarwal has been talking about uh, all his wealth creation studies over uh, the last 19 years uh, what better time than now and this forum to unveil a book which is compendium of all the 19 wealth creation studies uh, done by mr ramdev agarwal uh, and to unveil this compendium uh, the art of wealth creation book Uh, i would like to invite uh, mr durgesh sa director corporate database private limited on the stage along with him we would like to invite mr sanjoy bhattacharya founder partner fortuna capital sir if you could please come we would also like mr navin agarwal managing director motilal oswal financial services to please join them and mr motilal oswal himself thank you sir if you could join us so friends we'll be sending you a copy of this book over uh, next few days uh, i would also like to share that the book is available on bookzone.in and in some time it will be available on amazon and flipkart as well so feel free to buy uh, and obviously we'll share one copies with you can we have some? Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme related documents carefully.